everybody. Welcome to Obscure Animation. This is the podcast that we do every month where we take a look at a smaller, underrated, uh, obscure, independent, uh, less praised, however it might be, whatever we feel like the definition is that month, uh, for uh, to be talked about it and give it its moment in the sun. And today is, we're going to be talking about one that's probably more underrated than it is obscure because it is still DreamWorks. But uh, we're, we're gonna have a lot of fun talking about Spirit, the Stallion of the Cimarron. And I am film critic Rachel Wagner and my friend Stanford is here. Hey, how's it going? Yes. So how are you doing? Hey, I'm, you know, hanging in there. I'm just, I've, I've just been spending some time at home. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> a lot of time. <laughs> but, you know, I'm doing okay. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. If if people want an update on my uh, on the medical scare that I had, you want to listen to the Sunday devotional from uh, not this week but the week before. I give a whole update, but but yeah, I'm I'm responding well to the medication, and so we're getting good. that trying to get that blood pressure down good. so that hopefully my my breathing can can get better and and I'm just trying to kind of relax and. I eat no salt uh, as much as much as possible, and uh, so I'm actually feeling pretty good. Uh, it's been interesting because I actually right now because I'm because of the one of the medicines, I can't. I'm not supposed to drink more than a liter of water a day, and one of the things I'm the best at as far as my health is drinking like tons of water, especially because I love my um in fridge, uh, oh, water. Oh yeah, <laughs> not, those are so nice. <laughs> so I'm just like. Oh, it's, it's a challenge to not drink so much water but uh but uh it's it's working i feel i feel i feel positive about it okay and, good i'm so yeah, glad i made a lot of improvements in just a week i feel like good yeah so i'm uh, happy uh, to hear thank you and so t- yes i'm excited to talk about spirits uh and it's interesting i didn't do it on purpose but just by chance the director of the movie that we talked about last month, Smurfs the Lost Village, is the same director of uh, <laughs> that we are talking about. I know. I was gonna say it's it's cool and random, but but you know, but terrific. You know, I'm, I, think I it's know great. <laughs> Kelly Asbury. Yes. So if you're out there, Kelly, if you happen to Kelly. listen to this, <laughs> let us know. We it's, admire your work. Yes, think of these do. two these two movies. Yes, and he's not. He's had his hits so he's not a totally a uh a a a, a hidden gem obscure animation guy i mean in this this film got nominated for an oscar so again it's a little bit of a uh, of a loose definition there but i don't think it gets the uh the praise now at this point that it it just no i don't think you know and I don't believe it was a monster hit. I think it was a solid hit. It was a, a decent enough. I mean, it probably. lost money for them. Yeah. yeah well, but when you look at the budget, but yeah, it was a it was a pretty crazy year for animation because it was oh. the year that Spirited Away came out, and yeah, and uh, yeah, it was a crazy year. Yeah. Um, it wasn't also uh, well, Treasure Planet right came out in two thousand two, mm-hmm. did it? I mean, mm-hmm. there's all sorts of stuff going on, kind of the ups and downs. And also, I mean, tastes were evolving as far as, uh, you know, yeah. a 2D style versus the 3D style of animation. Mm-hmm. And even though clearly this movie uses a ton of computer gen- generated, you know, I mean, they used tons of computers to do so, uh, this. They had to the way, you know, the way it is. It's still, yeah. though, it has that 2D look. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting. We'll talk about that combination of CG and 2D. But yeah, this movie, uh, it was nominated along with with Spirited Away, the winner, uh, Ice Age, Lilo and Stitch, and Treasure Planet. So a pretty a pretty impressive year and a pretty yeah, it's, experimental it's, year, it's I think. It's a very interesting year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would say all those, but maybe Ice Age is the mainstream <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. one out of the, ben- out of the bunch. Yeah. Yeah, so it's an it's an interesting film, and uh, I enjoyed rewatching it. It's yeah, not without too. its flaws, but I I think that it's a very it's a very bold movie to make. I know, uh, right? And I think there. it's <laughs> it's amazing that it did get made. I'm surprised it got made too. And yeah, 
I, uh, you know, as I had mentioned, the last time I saw this movie, I saw it in the theater, you mm-hmm. know, as it, when it came out in 2002. And that's the, the one and only time. Not because I'm a hater. I mean, you know, I don't yeah. like DreamWorks a, a lot, but, but uh, very much. But um, I, I thought it was beautiful. And, you yeah. know, I was happy. I was really happy I got to see it on the big screen. And I was reminded of that rewatching it because mm-hmm. this was really a lot of beautiful visuals, yeah. which I know we'll get to. Yeah. So it starts out with this uh, long sequence with an eagle flying through basically it looks like the Grand Canyon. Yes. And clearly, clearly somewhere in the American West, right? Yeah. yeah. Where the film, where this film is based. Yeah. Or like Bryce or someplace like that. Or Zion. Yeah. Someplace like that. And, and the interesting thing I felt like with this sequence and through a number of spots in the film is that I'm sure at the time the photorealism was the big awe and spectacle of it. But for me, that has not aged well. But the 2D animation parts, when you would see like a landscape and it would kind of pan out a little bit more, uh, mm-hmm. that looked so much better than the, uh, th- that, that era of 2002 kind of CGI, uh, CGI water, CGI, it, it just, yes. it doesn't look rendered the way that we would now. Right. And that's fine. And I, I, I don't. It was just interesting to me because I just felt like the thing that was probably the most awe-inspiring at the time is now the thing that's like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point, Rachel, because uh, I was I was wondering about that too because I mean the scene is is rather striking. You know the way I think particularly the way that they move the camera through it. I mean very very cinematic, but I, I, I'm with you. It's almost like. To, even though the movie is clearly 2D, they went for a they went for a style with the backgrounds in particular. To I mean, for lack of a better term, it's almost photorealistic. You know, they yeah. really weren't they really weren't trying to do like this kind of artistic uh, interpretation of this environment. It was more like we're painting the envi- environment of what you know, what it looks like. Yeah, with this just with and this it, style, it has that uncanny valley look that uh that that air of cgi has Mm -hmm. um which is fine i don't mind it i mean i you know even toy story has that you know kind of that kind of sheen to it um but i i just think it doesn't hold up super well it's kind of like in in fantasia 2000 i think the the whole ride of springs you know with the um uh with the uh, with the whales i'm sure when they first did that uh that sequence that cgi was amazing and now it's just like i wish they had done it in hand-drawn because it looks dated yeah it would have been almost more yeah a lot more striking in hand-drawn versus yeah versus the cgi mm-hmm. that's the uh the founds of rome sequence oh, right? was it in, uh, in, yeah you're right you're right in, you're right um, you're right that's i knew what you meant and, it's, yeah. and, I, and I hear you i mean because <laughs> and again kind of of the time period too right i mean yeah the late nineties. And then here we're just a couple years later, we've got this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it is interesting when you think about that, uh, with spirit away winning that year, you know, that, that, that animation will never look dated. I mean, it'll never. Yeah, I mean, exactly. <laughs> as opposed it's, to CGI. Yeah. It's uh, just as beautiful now as it was then and yeah as it will be well into the future yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so it's interesting and we've after this little sort of uh montage we get to uh see the birth of spirit and his mother and and the they made a lot of really bold choices in this movie first of all to not anthropomorphize the horses at all um was pretty bold i think oh i agree yeah and again i was reminded of that with this rewatch it's like oh yeah the horses don't talk in this movie yeah <laughs> they don't even talk to each other no they and they just communicate with you know with some some nays and with uh their eyes mm-hmm. yeah yeah and what was interesting in hearing people uh talking i will read some of the comments that i had but people were saying oh well you know i liked it as a kid and when i was watching this i'm thinking 
this is seems like it would only be appealing to adults which is interesting yeah because i don't know i just feel like the i don't know there's just it's so not kid friendly there's nothing like charming or funny or <laughs> like, yeah there is a feeling of who were they making this movie for <laughs> and i guess it was jeffrey katzenberg's idea and he just really liked it he's like let's do it yeah jeffrey katzenberg you know yeah um. and <laughs> i i uh, i i think uh it's it's just an interesting choices because there's just it like the lead character i mean spirit he's not even that likable no <laughs> i mean there's and there is no comic relief of any kind yeah which is amazing no little sidekick characters or something yeah, that, that yeah um it's it's really it's spirit's movie he's basically in every frame yeah and and yeah i it, it's really it's so interesting and i i i really applauded them for not having any dialogue with the horses you know rather than not having the horses speak i thought that was a bold decision and frankly i almost wish that they didn't have any of the voiceover because you yeah, know so we're going to talk about that yeah we're yeah. going to talk about that because then all of a sudden matt damon voice matt damon's voice shows up yeah yeah i feel like if they were going to have a narrator i don't think the matt damon was the correct choice I would have picked someone like Sam Elliott with like a Western voice. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Someone like that. I mean, I feel like Sam Elliott's as close as we have to John Wayne. <laughs> like, yeah. Now. Yeah. And uh, exactly. as far as voices mm -hmm. and, uh, and I don't know, I think that would have been the perfect choice. I think that's a really good call. Cause I, I mean, I really like Matt Damon and he did. A, I, and I thought he did a, a credible job, but I, I agree with you. He, he wasn't the guy for the role. He just, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he was the guy. But, but also, I still, though, I really wish, and, and it kind of helped, but I almost think it would have been a lot bolder. I mean, and maybe, and maybe they tried it and they just were too scared or who knows, or any number of things we, you know, this one, Kelly Asper needs to contact us. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> we need to find out <laughs> like did did they did they you know scream for a focus group or focus groups you know the yeah. movie without a narrator it feels like that it really does it mm -hmm. feels like they kind of lost their guts and uh and decided to to have a narrator yeah um i we we have no idea that's none of that in the in the production details yeah uh so that's probably not true but it feels like it it feels like uh, it it feels like it was added on later in the process yeah uh i you know i just thought of who would have been perfect is uh not this year but last year i saw a documentary at sundance about native american author named n scott momaday uh -huh. and he has the best voice you've ever heard like he could be a voice actor i know he's just like he's practically james earl jones he has such a great voice and uh and i i think that somebody like that that's got either a, like Sa sam elliott he feels western in his voice or like somebody this native american in their voice i think something like that would have probably been the way to go yeah and i probably would have cut it down not had as much narration yeah i kind of wonder if you maybe needed a little bit uh unless i mean i i think if you were going to have no narration then i think you'd have to make this movie way cheaper i i mean then you're talking i just feel like with no narration no dialogue uh this movie it's like a, it's it's an it's it's an indie film yeah and i guess we should clarify too i agree with you rach um i i the uh for those you know who haven't seen it the horses don't as we say the horses don't talk but yeah they they encounter some humans there's like some u.s army you know right and some other stuff and those humans communicate yeah and there's a native american from uh that uh i mean and others but there's the one they talk a native little american bit man. not yeah, much it, though i mean it's those... true they don't talk a lot they yeah. talk some and and that i think and that worked okay for me yeah but i was kind of glad i was like oh good they'll they're talking to each other it's not like matt damon's gonna talk over you know 
right. describing their motivations or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's just an interesting, it's an interesting project. And like I said, it starts out, it's the whole life, basically. Well, not the whole life, but a uh, big chunk of his out, life. Yeah, yeah. It starts kind of out with his birth. Ad- ad- early adulthood, yeah. And his mother, and he's a Mustang. And he is a, a very free spirit. And uh, according to the Wikipedia, it said that I guess they were inspired by Glacier National Park, Yellowstone, Yosemite, and T- the Tetons. Yeah. Um, which was interesting because I'm like, where's Grand Canyon? Cause yeah, because it's like, like Grand Canyon. Um, well, yeah, I thought like, um, <laughs> this is Grand Canyon too. But anyway, that's yeah. just me. Don't mind uh, us. We, we only live in we only live in the American West. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it is beautiful. Uh, this that's the probably the biggest strength of this movie is just how pretty it is. And especially if you're a horse person and you think horses are beautiful, then I think you'll really enjoy this. First of all, just on that level. Oh yeah, because I think they really do justice to the horses. You know, mm-hmm. the horses. Yeah, they're 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 beautifully drawn, and and uh, I, I, that's probably the part I enjoyed mm-hmm. the most too. Was was the, the 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 animation of the horses. Yeah, and and so I also really enjoyed the music, as far as Hans Zimmer's score. Well, I'd say Hans Zimmer knocks it another one out of the park in this yeah. movie because his score is great and i have other things to say about that <laughs> we get it. Yeah, yes <laughs> so yes so the songs are by brian adams and i actually don't mind the songs per se but i think they feel too modern for the like story really out of place um yeah i mean the, the the lyrically they work because you know he's brian adams is singing about what's happening you know on the screen yeah. um but and i like and i and i don't dislike brian adams i mean it's not like i you know i think i think he's he's a talented songwriter and there's definitely some of the mm-hmm. songs i think are, are great yeah i just with you i didn't think that I, I i felt they were out of place again maybe too modern not and not not that i want just necessarily cowboy songs but i actually i kind of did though because i just thought yeah. this is a movie about the west and it's, yeah. it's really it's a western and well, yeah and they're just too modern like yeah, if they were gonna go too modern. If they didn't they don't necessarily have to be country songs but they just feel too modern for this yeah. kind of I mean, this is a this movie takes itself very seriously it's not a it just doesn't fit uh but like i said and i don't mind the songs themselves uh i think they're fine particularly i liked the remember who you are Yes. Song. I thought that was pretty song. That was pretty. But it's kind yeah. of like Tina Turner singing in Brother Bear. Like it just doesn't it's fit. Out of place. It just seems so random. It's like, yeah. what is Brian Adams, you know, who mm-hmm. is this 80s pop star? <laughs> You'll see. You know, this yeah. Movie set in like the 1800s in the American West, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But I love the, the animation on Spirit. And uh, I think that. It, he is a very consistent character. I mean, he never ever loses his kind of will. It's pretty amazing. Spirit's really, yeah, I think for the really a, a good character too, and um, very focused. And they never really, and they, and I thought they were true to his, that character throughout. The yeah, film. yeah, yeah. And I love the the opening scene when he confronts the buffalo uh, yeah. when he was young. And I, like I think that, that whole scene is beautiful and oh, really effective. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then I also like the way the, f- the, the, the film uses kind of light and, and uh, to show sort of, it, it creates tone, I think pretty well as mm-hmm. far as when he sees the light of the, of the Cowboys and he goes to kind of try to protect his family and uh, I think that that all works. And then he gets taken to the cal- Calvary to the fort, and yeah. uh, and we have James Cromwell as the uh, colonel who thinks that he can tame uh, that thinks he can tame spirit, but uh, he has no idea what he's getting into. <laughs> That's right. He has no idea. Then we get a montage, you know. Yeah poor uh poor oh, guy. he just gets worked <laughs> yeah yeah 
and uh, you know i i don't know how realistic it is for the mustangs if they really are that untrainable um uh, i i did really enjoy last year at sundance the movie the mustang um oh yeah i remember you telling mm -hmm. me about that yeah and they were able to tame i think most of these horses uh in this prison program that the movie's about uh, but i'm sure there are some that are untamable untamable mm -hmm. but uh yeah I mean, they probably have methods now uh that uh i mean i don't know if they have things they can give them to eat and things they can do you know to, yeah uh i don't know but um he is very very strong-willed that's for sure and I, I like one of the things actually I, I quite like too. And I want to get your opinion on it, Rachel. When um, so also when, when when Spirit is trying is getting trying to get broken in, you know, or, or by uh, by the cavalry folks, um, we meet Little Creek. Yes. Uh, who's a Lakota, if I'm not mistaken, right? The yeah. Lakota of, of the Lakota tribe, and they captured him and they tied him up near spirit so it's almost like they've got this parallel thing going on with the two of them even though they're not in this i mean i feel like because they're almost like trying to make both of them break you know yeah and then they were they work together to to free themselves and i i, I like I, I just i kind of like that parallel story in a lot of ways and little creek comes back in or he's yeah he's a he's an important character what what in, in one of the film. things that I liked was that they don't I don't I don't think at least that they glamorize the Lakotas uh, and as soon as he gets put a a rope around him by the Lakotas he has the exact same reaction yeah so there's not this sense of of uh, okay well you're better people so uh, right they're doing the there's same nothing thing pa it's not patronizing like it could be. Like some might do right i i really like that too i just thought it just it was just a depiction you know what i mean it wasn't it wasn't yeah. like yeah it wasn't and i also felt like they weren't um yeah they weren't like trying to change history or bury history right or something. i mean it's, that's why i'm confused because the rod tomatoes you know they have those little blurbs summarizing the different reviews yeah and it says a visually stunning film that may be too predictable and politically correct for adults but should serve children well and i'm really confused by that I, I can't think of anything in here that's politically correct I, I can't either i didn't that didn't that didn't cross my mind once in this feeling no mm -hmm. like i wish that i mean because it's 70 percent, so most gave it uh really good reviews uh i mean two-thirds basically yeah. gave it a good review and i don't know that just makes no sense to me there, yeah. I, I can't think of anything the the white people are treated the same everybody's treated the same nobody's yeah. held up i don't know weird i mean hey. unless there's something about like animal cruelty i guess maybe i, get, I guess i don't know i just can't, i don't know that, 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 i think that's so weird and yeah because maybe the yeah maybe the quote-unquote political correctness yeah is is the just because it's from the animal point of view and that all humans are bad <laughs> i mean they weren't necessarily saying that it's just the humans were being humans. They were, yeah, using the animals like humans do. Yeah. Know? So. Yeah, I uh, particularly I, at the time. I mean, they rode horses. Yeah, and that's how a Mustang, even today, yeah. if, if he was being tamed, that's how he would feel. So I, if anybody listening understands, I don't understand. Yeah. What that is talking about. I hear you. But I think there's something very classic in the storytelling here uh of uh of spirit and i know it, it makes it definitely the first thing you think of is something like black beauty uh-huh about yeah. the life of a horse and that's the easy one uh to think about uh and but also i mean i thought of uh um the black uh black stallion yeah i was thinking of the black stallion too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh even i don't know there's just something kind of classical and mythical and yeah. uh, it's a very simple story uh but um i think partly because if you compare it to something like uh the fox and the hound uh which uh, is is different but uh, i think kind of tries to sort of talk about nature 
in a somewhat in the, like the cycle of life kind of a thing, but uh-huh. uh, in a way, but it doesn't have the like sort of classical storytelling of this in the sense that it has all these, you know, side characters and, and humor and different things. Uh, but I think they're beats that are kind of the same. Uh, but this works, I think, better than that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I kept thinking, too, of, I guess maybe, maybe it was just more longing. Because, again, I thought they had, there was potential here to actually make a really cool animated Western. Yeah. But instead, the, you know, Brian, the Brian Adams songs and some of these other things, which we've already you know, t- you know, touched on. Yeah. Kind of wrecked that. And then it made me, I mean, just only for a brief moment, I promise, made me think of Home on the Range, which <laughs> just was, again, not that these two can even be compared at all, other than they, they both are attempting to be animated Westerns. Yeah. Spirit's much more successful. Right. In that regard, Home on the Range is just horrible. <laughs> If you want to know our home in the range and Fox on the Hound <laughs> yeah. thoughts, check out our Talking Disney yeah, exactly. episodes of those films. It was making me long, though, actually. I was like, oh, I wish somebody would make it really, because I love Westerns. Yeah. And I just said, wow, wouldn't that be great if somebody could really make a great animated Western? I don't know if they ever will. But. Yeah, I'm trying to think if we've ever, I mean, I guess a lot of people like Rango, uh, and they feel like that's an animated yeah. Western. I yes. don't care for it myself. I, that's not one of my favorites either. But but, yeah. but, uh, but then also, there's always Five Will Goes West. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's not a home run but in that, but they really tried... It does feel a little bit like they lost their nerve, yeah, uh, and didn't quite a hundred percent do what they wanted to do. Yeah, but, I felt that way too. Uh, but man, it does a lot of things right. I agree. Um, what did you think of the whole uh, train scene yeah. near the, you know, in the in in kind of Act Three? There's some really beautiful and amazingly done action scenes in the film. Mm-hmm. Like when they escape from the Colonel the first time, that whole sequence, and you That's see a uh, little Creek just grabbing on to the side. And I don't think I'm trying to think if, if there's ever a point where, where he's actually he never ridden, he's not. <laughs> like he regularly is, ridden. He is holding on for dear life. That's what <laughs> he's doing. Yeah. And uh, he, it's 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 really well done and then when there's uh, uh with the whole there's the whole scenes with him and rain and the girl horse and that whole scene with them in the water i think is pretty pretty well done and yeah, yeah. it's just cgi water but i thought it was pretty tense oh, and held yeah. up well i thought i thought that was really a compo a really well composed sequence too uh mm-hmm really yeah really dramatic and and and, and intense but yeah and I, but I just but well crafted yeah and then him just staying with her and not wanting to leave her i i thought they really captured the emotion uh that mm-hmm. you needed and that it's um uh it's right after that that he gets taken away and that's when you get the uh the remember who you are sequence uh and i thought that was the best song of the movie and uh used the best Mm -hmm. for sure agreed Mm -hmm. and uh, so that this is when he is sent to work on the railroad and this is as close as we get to him being kind of uh beaten down and submissive i guess (laughs) first and you see him working and then he realizes when he gets to the top of the of the mountain that they're going to be taking away his his land and i don't know how realistic really all of this is but but anyway he creates this whole scheme that he's going to get all of the uh the horses to go kind of against the the train and uh there's this whole pretty elaborate sequence where the train ends up rolling down the hill and catching fire and he ends up getting it's stuck. very dramatic yeah he gets stuck on a, a a log and uh and then that's when little creek saves him because he has a life debt uh to spirit 
and so yeah that i think what did you, you think of that whole sequence i quite liked it actually i mean it's sometimes i thought it was just a little maybe a little, little too much but um mm-hmm. but i mean they went big <laughs> you know, this yeah, is, they did. This is a big set piece <laughs> going on <laughs> and i mean and i liked it yeah the little creek was able to kind of pay the life debt you know or, mm-hmm. or and uh you know, overall, it, it worked. I was I wasn't too, too upset about. It. Sometimes I think that some of those scenes. I know it's 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 you know kind of an important part of, of many movies, but that they're a little too overdramatic. Mm-hmm. But still, I, I I was okay with that. Yeah, I I thought it worked pretty pretty well. I mean, yeah, I it's probably it the well. most it's the most anthropomorphized that he gets. Yes, he, he almost is looking at the camera at a certain point, like <laughs> yes, and uh, and. <laughs> so that's the closest he kind of kind of gets and i i i think that i uh, i don't know i think it i think it works i also like the quiet moments this the the more subtle moments as well yeah and uh yeah it is kind of funny because trains they have such <laughs> they have a tough time in on animated films I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking of like Anastasia and yeah. a bunch of other movies. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but but anyway, he gets freed, and uh, and then he, that he does let Little Creek ride him uh, as they are ch- being chased by the officers. And there's a pretty long sequence where they're in a canyon like setting, Grand Canyon like setting, and they keep going up and up and up, and then the uh, and it gets to the point that the officers are there and there's this uh gape gaping and canyon they're trapped i mean they're yeah, on top trapped. of trapped and they are completely trapped yeah yeah and he jumps across the the uh and makes it to the other side yeah and, what did you think of that um i liked it i thought it was good i i mean it's it, it's a little a little cheesy i guess but i yeah. i liked it. it you know in the in, in the context that works i mean it was rather impossible but i guess yeah. that was the i guess that was the point though right <laughs> and and it's the movies because his spirit I mean, he's, and his he's, spirit he's, stallion of the cimarron i mean come on yeah. he's, he's gonna he's gonna make it yeah right. <laughs> no. um but uh but they get uh they get free and uh and then uh, it gets reunited with rain and uh i mean it's definitely you could ask the question like did the movie take itself too seriously would have been better if they had had the comic relief would they have been better if uh you know if it if it was a little more kid friendly i would i would argue that it would it would have been uh-huh i think i think that having some comic relief would have been uh, a welcome relief because mm-hmm. it's a pretty serious film. Yeah. And you know, not that anything's wrong with that, but I just think yeah. often not has to, that it has to follow all these, you know, tropes, but uh, I think, I think some comic relief would have helped out. What do you think? I'm torn. I mean, the thing I guess that makes me, I feel like this is what makes this movie special and makes you remember it is that, wow, yeah, they did true. that. Um, that's true. Also, I just don't like DreamWorks comedies 99% yeah. of the time. So <laughs> I'm like, right. so I'm like eh. ah, it's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even in Prince of Egypt, the one thing that doesn't work is the comic relief. Yeah, the comic relief is not good in it. Well, so, and I like, was thinking mm. of, um, Again, not that the necessary can you know, can be can be paired, but even like like in Pocahontas, Disney's Pocahontas, uh-huh. Miko the raccoon and Flit the hummingbird, it's kind of so so. Some mm-hmm. of it kind of works and some of it kind of doesn't. And what would they have done? You know, had some kind of yeah. I mean, it might have helped if he'd had a friend. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, another because he has rain. He has rain, but you know, she's not in. I mean, she uh, no. It's not like a big force in that. I mean, she is, but she isn't. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. like, yeah. So I think that might have helped, but yeah, it's just such a unique film, and it's so beautiful. Yeah, it's really, and, it's a beautiful film, and I'm with you. I, I, I yeah, probably is just as well that they didn't go for comedy because we would have yeah. 
too. And I do always appreciate it when I feel like studios trust kids. Yeah. You know, that they make something that, I mean, because that was, that was Walt Disney. I mean, he, yeah. that's what, I mean, obviously you have like the dwarfs and Snow White, but then he would do Bambi. He would yeah. do, yeah. Uh, you know, these Fantasia, these pretty bold films that he didn't feel a need to kind of, uh, I mean, I guess Bambi has its cute side character moments, but I, I just feel like he was very, he trusted kids also. Yeah. And uh, um, I know, I feel like even though the movie clearly does have its flaws with the, the music, and the, but I, I still, I feel like 70% is too low. I feel like yeah. it's, it's, it's such a beautiful movie. I feel like it's such classic storytelling mm-hmm. uh, that it, it serves it should be higher i really yeah. think it should be higher you know one other question for you rachel that i've been that i was pondering too and you know sorry, sorry to keep bringing up all these other films no. but, but uh you know why does the film for, i mean just i guess i was trying to think about it even for, for in for my taste mm-hmm. why does the film like disney's tarzan work as far as like here's phil collins a brit you know a brit drummer yeah <laughs> <laughs> making these pop songs yeah they totally worked for me in that film and the brian adams songs didn't work for me in mm-hmm. spirit and I, I i don't know i mean because yeah. I, I, I you know i mean i was questioning my own criticism just from a few minutes yeah. ago as i'm saying well <laughs> what's an 80s pop star you know recording this I mean, the same thing with tarzan what's this 80s pop star recording music for this i mean tarzan is a a bit more of a fantasy, I guess, in a, in, in a way, well, kind of an, you know, an escapist adventure. I mean, I don't, yes, I don't think that Tarzan takes itself as seriously. But Spirit as was pretty Spirit. serious. Spirit and is, also, it's like the difference of going to uh, a um, uh, slightly, like, modern museum of art. That's like, that's like Tarzan. Uh, and, uh, uh, or maybe even, like, mid-century, maybe? Mm-hmm. Where it's like, <laughs> going to spirit is like going to a traditional art museum like going to the louvre or something like that you know yeah like it's yeah. just it's it's kind of it's different the the one has you know cr- crash in the camp and and uh and stuff like that that i mean there's nothing like that here this is a very uh this is this is this is the kind of movie that for kids that like nature documentaries you know what i mean and lots of kids do yeah Lots of kids will yeah. sit and just love, you know, watching the, I mean, my, my, little, my little sister, she had this whole, she was, when she was like three, four, uh, she had a whole movie just watching barn animals. That was it. No plot. Just watching the barn animals. Just watching for the animals. Like, yeah. For like two hours. It was, or maybe an hour. It was long. <laughs> and, wow. um, and I mean, kids love stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah, it's true. It's true. And so I think uh, that it's kind of that, that side of things of sort of more like diving into nature and, uh, and I don't know, it just, it, it's such a theme of old West in this movie. And so for the songs to not be old West, it's distracting. And yeah. the, the songs in with, with Tarzan the theme is somewhat ambivalent as far as time and place. Right. I, I mean, I guess it's the, supposed to be what, like the late 1800s, early 1900s, yeah. kind of the Victorian era, or Victorian era. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But because it's only really in Jane's clothes. Right. I think, I think it's still maintaining a certain degree of ambivalency. I don't know. It's hard. It's, it's a little bit tricky, but I don't know, I just feel like there's something that's sort of more classical storytelling and it's just so firmly rooted in the old west mm-hmm. that the songs should have been classical or old west kind of songs. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least sung by a singer who would you could believe yeah. more, you know, even if they were the same songs, some other some other voice that carry that yeah that like if you possibly. look at if you look at melody time uh with um pago spill and you have roy rogers singing yeah that exactly. just makes way more sense it makes sense 
Yeah. Totally works. Yeah. Yeah. So, and even somebody like, you know, what would have been good is um, in Home on the Range, one of the best parts is that Bonnie Ray song. Yes. Uh, exactly. She, she would have been, she would have been good. Uh, yeah. The um, little, oh, is Little Patch of Heaven, is that her? Well, Little right. Patch of Heaven is Katie Lang. Yeah, that, Katie That Lang. one actually works pretty well, too. Yeah. But but the the real emotional one is that Bonnie Raitt song. Yeah. 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 So, I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, and maybe I give it too much credit for what a leap it, I feel like it was. Uh, and it was just such a bold film that I enjoy watching it. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, like, it's definitely not without its flaws of just the music doesn't quite work. And uh, they, I think that it's not that they needed comic relief, but I do think that they, uh, they maybe could have given a few moments to sort of rest. Yeah, it needed and, it needed a rest, a yeah. rest break, and allow spirit to be a little, little bit more likable of a character. He's yeah, pretty, he's woo, even the little creek. He's pretty. He's pretty mean. <laughs> yeah, he's mean. But uh, but it's uh, I don't know. It's I just wish that this and Prince of Egypt had done better, because I just wish that DreamWorks had gone more in that direction. I know uh, that's more experimental. Thing, that's another thing that kind of makes me feel sad too is that that these films didn't do because this is up there for me with with in DreamWorks. You know, as far as yeah. the DreamWorks films go, it's definitely in my top three. I would I would think of, of of DreamWorks films because, and it's it's too bad that the, they weren't more popular because, uh, you know, then we get the output that you know we get. <laughs> so, yep. um, yeah. 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 I know it's it it is too bad, uh, and uh, I wish that uh, more animated films had the kind of guts of this film. Yeah. Uh, to do. Uh, I guess it's an experiment that I, I admit isn't perfect, but I enjoyed, I enjoyed, enjoyed watching it. Yeah. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's pretty good. So we got quite a few responses on Twitter. Yes. And so Nostalgia Cast, he says, it's fine. Has a good, albeit fairly cheesy Hans Zimmer, Brian Adams song score. The Matt Damon narration is a bit distracting though. I thought it would have benefited if they just left that all out. Let the kids and audiences parse out what was happening for themselves. I think we basically agree. Yeah. It, it probably would have. Uh, Cameron Ward says, ambitious and underrated. Uh, Kyle, he says, beautiful visuals, nice lack of dialogue, some impressive set pieces, a little self-important, self-important but enjoyable. I think that's, that's fair. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Uh, and man marie says the soundtrack is is lit <laughs> it's fire it's good yeah. um mike cobella says definitely underrated overlooked showcases how amazing dreamworks was in 2d animation even though there's lots of cg used uh, there already and the story is just good spirited ha <laughs> use the pun <laughs> maybe it would have been better without narration but i need a rewatch to evaluate that song's also great like I, I do want to repeat that I don't have I really don't have any problem with the songs I just I think the arrangement and the singer should have been different yeah yeah same same here and they just they just really because of that they just feel out of place to me yeah, yeah. uh so Munier Abedrabo says not very good in my opinion nice visuals but I find the story and characters lacking obscure maybe underrated absolutely not <laughs> uh so uh Kate does says, not sure how well it holds up, but I loved this movie as a kid, which is interesting. Uh, and then one last Rosa review, she says, definitely underrated. I enjoyed it very much. I, for once, appreciated the story, has memorable songs, and my girls adore this film. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'd probably give it... Um, Amy, I probably give it a three out of five. Yeah, that's what I'd give it is three out of five. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. So uh, it's it's very interesting to talk about. So let us know what you think about Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron. Do you think it's underrated or properly rated, or what do you think? I mean, I was pretty mad when I saw that 
that DreamWorks was making some horrible Netflix show based on it. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> but I guess it's about, it's, it's just for like young girls, the show uh this spirit uh show <laughs> yeah no, i've never i've never watched it have you watched it i haven't watched it so i shouldn't criticize it yeah and i'm like it, you had something so special and unique why are you turning it into I this know. <laughs> and my guess is that the animals t- are anthropomorphized i think in, so in yeah this animated they're in this <laughs> net netflix series uh, uh, yeah. yeah so what what is your favorite uh, dreamworks is it oh prince of egypt yeah me too. hands down hands yeah. down me too yeah uh, it's my it's my favorite uh, it's so. just it's such a beautiful film i love it mm-hmm. yeah yeah probably the the three that we've done on this show uh are probably yeah. my top three favorites yeah i th- I, I think they're m- mine too i'm i'm quite fond of kung fu panda oh yeah i, I do love and i do I do like the dragon movies and too. the dragon movies were well done too. Yeah. Uh, but, but, uh, I thought I felt like with Kung Fu Panda DreamWorks found their groove. Yeah. You know, as far as just yeah. like a really a good mix of comedy and just saying something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I really <laughs> like action. Yeah. I really liked abominable last year. Oh yeah. That's and right. You're, you're that that one I thought was really good. It wasn't like the most original, but I thought it had tons of heart and was so pretty uh, that it really worked for me. But uh, yeah, and it's interesting. Uh, they they make a lot of movies, so. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I wish that they had continued to be experimental like they were in Spirit because uh, you really don't see that again, I don't think from the company in the same way for sure. There's nothing that's, as sort of artistically bold in the history in the ever i i don't think ever i can't think of anything that's as uh i mean i guess the first dragon movie would probably be i guess as close as you'd get again from yeah dreamworks so yeah true anyway it's interesting so yeah let us know what you think of spirit stallion and cimarron and samford where can people find you I'm on Twitter at Stanford Clark, and I have a movie blog and podcast at moviespastandpresent.com. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rod Tomatoes. So check that out. And, uh, and make sure if you're listening on iTunes, if you can give us your ratings and reviews. And if you are listening on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It means so much to us. We really appreciate it. We also have our patron group, which is really fun. And we love uh, talking with you. And we love getting all this, the support. It means so much to us. And also we have our Animation Junkie t-shirts that are at the merch store. So definitely check that out. And uh, lots of other fun designs. So take a look there. And thanks so much. Uh, and we'll talk again next month. If you have any ideas for Obscure Animation, just let us know. Bye, everyone. Bye.